immediately. It is now time for a question period. The Leader of Her Majesty's Royal Opposition. Premier, 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 you said, quote, I'm not going to force someone to resign in the face of allegations that I do not believe to be true. Quote. Well, Premier, Pat Severa's cousin, the former Minister of Finance, once said the following when he was named in a search warrant. He said, I have no idea as to what the allegations are or the facts on which they're based. My responsibility is to step aside. Mm -hmm. Premier, why should Pat Severa not be held to the same standard? Why shouldn't she have to step aside while two OPP investigations are ongoing? Good Thank you. Premier. Well, again, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to the uh, uh, interim leader of the uh, opposition for the question. And uh, he knows that I take this matter very seriously. He also knows that uh, Greg Cerbera was it, was an uh, elected official, Mr. Speaker, and he was a uh, minister of the crown. So he knows that these are very different situations. Um, as I say, I've taken and I do take this matter very seriously. Elections Ontario determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury were baseless, Mr. Speaker. Um, we'll continue to co cooperate fully, but I just remind the member opposite that this is an investigation that is not taking place in this legislature. It's an investigation that's taking place outside the legislature, and we will continue to work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Premier, again to the Premier. Premier, your Deputy Premier said, quote, the Premier will not force the resignation of someone when the allegations against that, against that person are baseless. Now, Premier, I need not remind Mr. you that Agriculture, come to order. completely contradicts the findings of the Chief Electoral Officer. When a minister of Premier's office is under police investigation, former Minister Sabera had wise words when he said, meanwhile, it's appropriate for me to step aside from my responsibilities while the invest investigation occurs. Did the right thing. Premier, why is it not appropriate for your Deputy Chief of Staff to step aside? The media called her, next to yourself, the most powerful woman in the province of Ontario. She's as important as a cabinet minister and probably makes more decisions than cabinet ministers in your government. So why is it not appropriate that she step aside? <laughs> It's interesting to hear the uh, the commentary from the member opposite, which I think actually reveals more about how he sees government working than it does about how government works, Mr. Speaker, from uh, from our perspective. And I want to just remind the member opposite what the chief electoral officer said. The chief electoral officer clearly stated, and I'm quoting, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. So, Mr. Speaker, the investigations are entirely independent. The Public Prosecution Service of Canada has been retained. We will continue to work with the, uh, with the authorities, Mr. Speaker, but that investigation takes place outside of this, uh, of this House. Mr. Thank you. Final supplementary. Again, to the Premier. Again, Premier, your Deputy Premier has said that the Premier has demonstrated a new and different and better way dealing with opposition allegations. But yeah, the Chief Electoral Officer said that he has found a prima facie case of contravention of the Elections That's Act, right. and he Hold sent it on up. for further process and prosecution. Premier, these are not opposition allegations. These are findings of an independent officer of this legislator. The investigation is not happening outside this legislature. In fact, it's happening just down the hall in your office. Premier, by continuing to stand by Pat Sabera, you're embarrassing the office you hold. You're degrading the reputation of every elected member in this House because people are starting to think this is simply business as usual. Question. Speaker, this is liberal business as usual. Shame. Premier, will you finally have Ms. Sabera step aside? Thank you. <laughs> Seated, please. Start the clock. Seated, please. Thank you. Premier. Mr. Speaker, well, I've made repeated statements on this matter. I uh, made a statement on Friday. I've answered questions in the House. There's an investigation underway, Mr. Speaker, and I'll, I'll continue to cooperate with the process. But that process is entirely independent of government, Mr. Speaker, and it's independent of this House, and the member opposite knows that. And I understand the back and forth of question period. I understand it very well, Mr. Speaker, but I really believe that accusing people of being criminals when there's an investigation going on is wrong, Mr. Speaker, because the electoral officer, just to remind the members opposite, what the electoral officer said is that 
I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's Order. guilt or innocence. Yeah. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. So it is entirely yeah. inaccurate yeah. to say that the elections officer has made a finding in this case, Mr. Speaker. The, uh, the electoral officer has left that to prosecutors and judges, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. No questions. The leader of the opposition. Premier, Mr. Speaker. Premier, <coughs> Premier, the Ontario C Civilian Police Commission has said, quote, all police service board members have an obligation to respect, uphold, and follow the law. While this is true for every citizen, it is even more so for individuals who have the legislated responsibility for ensuring law enforcement and crime prevention in their community. End of quote. Premier, as you ignore the calls for you to have Jerry Lougheed resign, you also ignore the, ignore the higher standard that is expected of Mr. Lougheed as chair of the Sudbury Police Services Board. So will you finally do the right thing and ask Jerry Lougheed to step aside? Thank you. Thank you. Be seated. Thank you. The, uh, the interjections while I'm trying to get quiet are not acceptable. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, you know, I, I have said this, I will say it again, that uh, we do not direct police services boards. They are responsible for the provision of adequate and uh, effective police services in their municipalities. And, Mr. Speaker, I understand that the Sudbury Police Services Board addressed this issue. Member from Leeds, Granville, Mr. Uh, Lougheed to remain, and they will, uh, they will continue to make the determinations that they see to be appropriate, Mr. Speaker. The investigation is ongoing. We will continue to cooperate, and uh, we will work with the authorities, but that investigation is happening outside of this House, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary to the uh, Premier, Mr. Speaker. Again, Premier, the Ontario Civilian Police Commission says that members of police service boards have, quote, a responsibility mm. to conduct themselves with the utmost circumspection and prudence and are expected to have the highest levels of honesty and integrity, and that this is most certainly the case for board chairs. End of quote. Premier, while your appointee, Jerry Lougheed, is under two OPP investigations, his honesty and integrity are being called into question. So I'll ask you, Premier, don't you think the residents of Sudbury deserve a person as chair of their police services board, a person who is above suspicion and held to the same standard to which other police service board members and board chairs are held to? Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. And I thank the member opposite uh, for the question. And as, as Speaker, as uh, as I've uh, spoken to this issue before, uh, the police services board is accountable to the, their local communities. That's why, Speaker, we have police services board so that they can provide uh, oversight for the local police service, so that they can ensure that they can provide adequate and effective uh, policing within their jurisdiction, uh, Speaker. And that's why. Uh, as we have seen in the case of, of Sudbury, the local Ottawa Police Service uh, Board, which is made up of both municipal and provincial appointees, have looked into the matter and decided to keep uh, Mr. Lahid as the chair of the board. Mr. Speaker, we should respect that uh, that decision of theirs, and, and if there needs to be any further uh, looking into this matter, yes, the Ontario Civilian Police Commission is very well equipped as an arm's length uh, uh, a body to look into the matter, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, to the Premier. Mr. Lanark will come to order. Final supplementary. The Ontario Civilian Police Commission has also said that there is, quote, an obligation of the board to obey the law, and this necessitates an effort to ensure the propriety of their actions when the questions arise. I think we can all agree in this House that the propriety, propriety of Mr. Lougheed's actions has arisen. In addition to Mr. Lougheed's normal responsibilities, the board goes on to say he or a board chair has a leadership role. And Premier, you have a leadership role, so we sow some leadership. Do the right thing. Get rid of these bad apples. Get rid of the uh, person who's chairing uh, the police services board in Sudbury, who's under suspicion. Just clear the air. Let the police do their job. Let the courts do their jobs. Let everyone have their day in court and save your own reputation. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you.
Minister. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Speaker. I think, Speaker, the member is fully aware, and I've, uh, I've stated uh, before in this House, there is a code of conduct uh, that is uh, that is put in place uh, through through regulation, and it's up to the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, Speaker, who has the responsibility to member ensure from Oxford that there are no breaches uh, to the code of conduct. Uh, speaker, that is an appropriate process to have because it's arm's length from the government. The Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services, Speaker, has no authority to suspend or remove uh, a member uh, of the police services board. So I, I suggest, Speaker, that uh, the members in this House refrain from being judge and jury and everything in between uh, and let the independent process, as the we have said, from the jurisdiction, from the order, uh, second the time. do their work. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. New question, the leader of the third party. Thank you, question, uh, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Uh, the Premier seems to think that uh, Liberals did nothing wrong when Andrew Olivier was being offered a job. According to her convoluted logic, she seems to believe that Deputy what Deputy House Leader Sudbury and the member from Beaches East York come to order. Noble. But when she's been asked who ordered this noble deed, Speaker, she refuses to answer. It doesn't make sense. If she feels everything is okay, then there shouldn't be any problem whatsoever in answering the question, who directed that Andrew Olivier be offered a job? Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Well, as the member opposite knows that uh, I challenge the premise of the question, I've said it many, many times, Mr. Speaker. I take this, I take this situation very seriously. Uh, there is an investigation going on, but that investigation is not going on in this House, Mr. Speaker. No. It's going on with the authorities outside of the legislature. We will continue to work with them, but I've, I've said I take it seriously, and we will uh, we'll do everything in our power to work with the authorities and make sure that uh, they get all the information that they request, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. But the Premier doesn't see, see any problems at all with offering Andrew Olivier, quote, a full-time or part-time job at a constituency office or appointments to boards or commissions, unquote. If the Premier thinks there's there's nothing wrong, Speaker. Will she tell Ontarians who made the decision to dangle these jobs in front of Andrew Olivier? Well, again, Mr. Speaker, um, the the member opposite knows that I have uh, I have talked about this in the House and outside of the House. I have talked about the fact that uh, I made a decision that. Glenn Tebow was going to be our uh, candidate in uh, Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. We're very happy to have him. It was a tough decision for Glenn to uh, uh, run for us and leave the, uh, leave the NDP, Mr. Speaker, but he made that decision. We're very pleased to have him with us, and he will be a strong, strong voice for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. There is an investigation going on. That investigation is, is happening outside of this House, and we'll work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Final supplementary. Speaker, last year the Premier said, and I quote, here was what was top of mind when I came into this office. How are we going to make sure questions that are being asked are going to be answered? Good question. My question isn't complicated, Speaker, but it's very serious, and the Premier has refused to answer it 31 times. The Premier insists there was nothing wrong, no wrongdoing in Sudbury, so I'm not sure why she's refusing to answer a basic question. Who gave Pat Sabera and Jerry Lougheed those noble instructions to offer Andrew Olivier a job? Well, Mr. Speaker, as I have said, and I will read uh, again what the uh, Chief Electoral Officer stated, and I, you know, I, I remind the member opposite that the elections, uh, uh, elections Ontario determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury were baseless, Mr. Speaker, and he went on to say. And I quote, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges. The leader of the third party has decided that she understands everything about what happened, Mr. Speaker. She's got her own narrative and she's got her own reasons for raising it in the way that she does. I understand those reasons. She's in a very tough spot, Mr. Speaker. You know, they didn't win the by-election in Sudbury, and I know that that's a, that's a real problem for them. The fact is, there is an investigation going on. It's happening outside of this Answer. house, Mr. Speaker. I will work with the authorities outside of this house, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. New question, leader of the third party. Thank you, Premier. My next question is also for the Premier. The Premier says that she made up her mind to appoint her candidate back in November, but as of December the 12th, her deputy chief of staff didn't know, her campaign director didn't know, 
the local Liberal kingmaker didn't know, Andrew Olivier didn't know, the local riding association didn't know. In fact, nobody seemed to know. Does the Premier have any evidence to back up her story, Speaker? Thank you. Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, once again, I have uh, I've made repeated statements on this matter. I made a statement on Friday that is in the public realm, and the uh, the leader of the third party ha can read it. But I'll I'll say a little bit about again what I'll repeat what I said there. I said there's an investigation underway. This that process is. Uh, entirely independent of government and of this House. We respect the process, Mr. Speaker, and I, I hope that the opposition parties do the same. But we will work with the authorities outside of this legislature, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, the Premier says that she decided to appoint her a candidate back in November. Now, she can't seem to find any evidence for her story. On Tuesday, the Deputy Premier said, and I quote, the Premier listens to advice, and then she has a conversation with her soul." Unquote. Now, did the Premier have a conversation with anyone other than her soul about this decision, and can she back that up with evidence? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, the member opposite knows, uh, knows full well that I have been very clear about uh, what, uh, what I decided in Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. I decided that uh, Glenn Tebow was going, to be our, uh, was going to be our candidate, Mr. Speaker. And there, there is an investigation going on. That investigation is happening outside of this uh, legislature, Mr. Speaker. But I am very proud of our new MPP for Sudbury, Mr. Speaker. I am very proud, proud of Glenn Tebow. Glenn has been a strong advocate for the people of Sudbury, Mr. Speaker, and he ran for us. He ran for us because he knows how important it is to invest in people, in their talent and their skills, how important it is to invest in infrastructure, Mr. Speaker. He knows that there's infrastructure that the people of Sudbury need in order for Sudbury to be able to thrive. And he knows that it's important that people have some, some security in their retirement, Mr. Speaker. That's why he ran for us, and that's why we're pleased to have him as our member, Mr. Speaker. A supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Nearly two years ago, the Premier said this, and I quote, Throughout the run-up to the leadership, I said that it was absolutely imperative that we open up the process Order, and that we provide information. Unquote. That's not a very lofty goal, Speaker. It's just basically the basics of good government. This is the 13th time the Premier has been asked for evidence, and Ontarians have still not got an answer. Now, I think it's absolutely imperative that the Premier opens up and provides information. Can the Premier provide any evidence at all that supports her version of the Sudbury bribery scandal? <laughs> Speaker, let me just speak to the, the first part of the uh, question that the member opposite has raised, and that is the issues that I raised when I was running in leadership and my uh, intention and then my commitment and my follow-through to open up the process that was ongoing at that point, Mr. Speaker. I did that. The Justice Committee, the scope of the Justice Committee was expanded, Mr. Speaker. There were hundreds of thousands of documents that were, uh, were brought before that committee. Dozens of witnesses came and talked about the uh, situation of the, uh, the uh, cancellation of the gas plants, Mr. Speaker. And that process was opened up. And we changed the rules, Mr. Speaker, in terms of retention of documents, in terms of the siting of of uh, large energy infrastructure. So, Mr. Speaker, I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I said we were going to change the process. We were going to open it up. That's what Answer. I did, Mr. Speaker. And the, in this particular investigation, as I've said, it's happening outside of this house, and we'll cooperate with the authorities. Yeah. Good question. The member from Leeds, Greenville. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the uh, Premier. As one of your chief uh, advisors, Ms. Patricia Sorbera must listen to a lot of your phone calls. On tape, she told Mr. Olivier that the Premier, quote, knew how massive of an ask this is, unquote. Sorbera told Mr. Olivier, you're the third person I've ever heard ask this of. There was a lot of asking from your office, but not a lot of telling. Premier, who were the other two people you asked to step aside, and did Ms. Sorbera offer them any appointments? Premier. Mr. Speaker, the investigation 
is happening outside of this House. And, Mr. Speaker, I will fully, fully uh, cooperate and work with the authorities, as we all will, Mr. Speaker. But the fact is that that investigation is not happening inside this House. It's a completely independent process. It's independent of government, and it's independent of this legislature, and we'll work with the authorities outside this House. Thank you, Speaker. My supplemental back to the Premier. It's well known that Andrew Olivier wasn't the only person seeking the Liberal Sudbury nomination. The recorded call said that Jerry Lougheed and Patricia Sorbera talked to Mary Ann Matichuk about the nomination. Mr. Lougheed said, now Mary Ann has to just get lost. So, Premier, did your operatives tell Ms. Matichuk to just get lost, or did they also offer her jobs, appointments, or whatever? Deputy Premier. Deputy Good morning, Speaker. And I really do want to take this opportunity to congratulate the Ontario PC Party on, on being the cover story of the current issue of National Geographic magazine, Speaker. Um, this is a I, uh, I will remind us all that my job is to try to uh, reach some decorum in this place, and uh, I'd like all members to be helpful with that. And having done so, we would be able to finish our question and answer period in a way in which I know that everyone would want us to. Oh, well, well, Speaker, I, I, I do. It's a sincere congratulation. The War on Science uh, article, it's, it's, this issue is on, it's on newsstands now, and I would be happy to pass my copy off to you uh, for maybe your signature, Speaker. Uh, so, um, I do think that uh, the, the notion that ev evolution never happened is a cover story here. Uh, climate change does not exist, Speaker. This is a wonderful um, synopsis of the P uh, PC Party of Ontario. Yes, I congratulations. New question, the member from Timmins, James Bay, and I remind everyone what I said about props. Carry on, please. My question is to the Premier. On December the 12th, Pat Sabero said to Andrew Olivier, you've been, directed, you've been directly asked by the Leader and the Premier to make a decision to step aside to allow Glenn to have an opportunity uncontested. Is that what the Premier and her soul had discussed before giving Pat Sabero her instructions? Premier. Once again, Mr. Speaker. Uh, as I have said a number of times this morning, uh, the investigation is taking place outside of this House. I take this matter very, very seriously, and uh, I've spoken to it repeatedly. Elections Ontario has uh, made a, a, a decision, Mr. Speaker. They determined that the allegations against me and the uh, member for Sudbury were baseless. They've also said, they've also said that, um, and the chief electoral officer said this, that, and I quote, I'm neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges." Unquote. So the fact is, Mr. Speaker, that process has gone into the next phase, and that is the investigation that is taking place right. now, but it's taking place outside of this House. Thank you. Supplementary. Well, let's do some more soul-searching. On December 11th, Jerry Lougheed said to Andrew Olivier, so I come to you on behalf of the Premier and on behalf of, yes, Thibault Mord indirectly, to ask you if you would consider stepping down, even more than that, Andrew nominating him. Is that what the Premier and her soul had discussed before giving Jerry Lougheed his instructions? Mr. Speaker, if the member opposite is asking me whether I wanted to keep Andrew and I wanted Andrew Olivier to be involved in the party, I've said that many times, Mr. Speaker. I wanted to keep him involved, as I hope, as I hope the uh, party opposite is working to keep uh, their past candidate involved, Mr. Speaker. I think it's important for leaders and members to reach out to people who have uh, either lost an election or uh, who have uh, have not been involved to bring them back into the fold, Mr. Mr. Speaker, so I, I, I have said repeatedly that, uh, that I think that that is a responsibility of leaders of a party. But in terms of this particular situation, the investigation is happening outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, and we'll continue to work with the authorities. Thank you. New question. The member from the Republic of Lecture. 
Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier as Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs. Mr. Speaker, human rights are an essential staple in any democracy. And all Ontarians have a right to live free from discrimination, inequality, and intolerance. The protection of human rights is a fundamental, pro uh, fundamental principle in this province, and this government has taken the most significant steps to strengthen our human rights in some 40 years to better ensure dignity and justice for all Ontarians. Our strengthened human rights system supports these rights by better enforcing Ontario Human's right, Human Rights Code and ensuring dignity by providing timely and efficient access to justice for those who face discrimination. Unfortunately, I don't feel this excellent leadership uh, gets the appropriate notice. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Premier as Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, Question. enlighten this House on how this government has ensured human rights are ensured for every Ontarian. Mr. Speaker, and I thank the member for the question, and I, I also agree that the defense of human rights is an essential part of our community and our role, Mr. Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to thank Barbara Hall for her work as Chief Commissioner of the Ontario Human Rights Commission. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara oversaw the work of the OHRC during the transition of Ontario's human rights uh, system. The OHRC's mandate changed to focus on the big issues looking for the roots of discrimination. Under the leadership of Ms. Hall, the Commission tackled many challenges, some that were new and some that had been around for some time. There are three particular areas that stand out to me, Mr. Speaker. Housing, mental disabilities, including addictions, and gender identity and gender expression. Yes, People didn't necessarily see the human rights value in these areas right away, but thanks to the hard work of Barbara and the Ontario Human Rights Commission, We've made great, great improvements on some of Ontario's most vulnerable citizens. Supplementary. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I want, I want to thank the Premier for her answer. And the work that's been accomplished in this area is truly honourable, and it's a model for all other jurisdictions to follow. I still feel as though this progress is an essential area of our province that needs to be brought to the attention of not only the residents of Etobicoke Lakeshore, but to all the residents of Ontario. And I understand that in 2008, the Ontario government commissioned a report in order to maximize the potential of the human rights system throughout this province. If the Premier, in her capacity as Minister of Intergovernmental Affairs, could care to elaborate on the expanded mandate of the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal and what areas have been changed during the uh, wonderful tenure of Ms. Hall, I'm sure this House would be very appreciative Question. to know what progress has been made. Good. Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore for his work at the municipal level, Mr. Speaker, and I know that he will carry that work on uh, provincially. The Ontario Human Rights Commission, thank you, Human Rights Commission addresses the underlying causes of discrimination. That's what they exist to do through education, policy development, research. The Commission works to preserve the spirit of tolerance that has long characterized Ontario. Homeless people or people with mental health disabilities or transgendered people, Mr. Speaker, Speaker, often didn't even know that they had human rights, didn't know what their rights were. And employers, service providers, and educators didn't know that they had responsibilities. The OHRC was part of a process to address these issues and to help break down barriers. Mr. Speaker, I want to extend my appreciation to the hard work and dedication of Chief Commissioner Barbara Hall. After more than 30 years as a community worker, lawyer, municipal politician, and public servant, Barbara Hall will be entering now the next phase of her Answer. life. Barbara, on behalf of all Ontarians, I want to thank you for your devotion to public service. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. New question, the member from Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Minister, on Tuesday in your absence, the Attorney General stated that under Section 25 of the Police Services Act, you as Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services are unable to ask a member of the Police Services Board to resign. That may be true, but that's not the question that was asked. 
Minister, will you ask the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, the independent oversight body of the Ontario Police Services Boards, to investigate the inappropriate actions of Mr. Jerry Loggy as laid out in the Chief Electoral Officer's report? Thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, no, speaker, I, I, uh, speaker, I would have hoped that the member would have used this valuable time to talk about Health his private care. member's bill on Health Ryan's care. law, but he chooses he chooses to talk about issues uh, that are not not relevant to the lives and the better be uh, better well-being of Ontario. Order. Let's stop the clock, please. And while I'm at it, I'll remind all members that uh, we don't make reference to someone's uh, attendance here. I know. Thank you. Please. Speaker, thank you. Uh, Speaker, as I have stated on numerous occasions before and a and, uh, and couple of times uh, uh, today, uh, we know in the case of uh, Sudbury Police, uh, uh, Police Board, uh, they've looked at the matter uh, and they've decided to keep Mr. Lahid uh, as the chair of the board. Uh, we need to respect, uh, Speaker, uh, the, the jurisdiction of the uh, local police uh, service while an Answer. investigation uh, is, uh, is ongoing. And if, if, uh, if anyone feels that uh, there's a uh, been a breach of the, uh, of the code of conduct, such as the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, they have the authority to initiate an, an investigation. Thank you. Supplementary. Speaker, speaker, back to the minister. Minister, it's in, inappropriate and very insulting to the people of Ontario to say that the decision to keep Mr. Loghig as chair was made by the Greater Sudbury Police Services Board. That wasn't their call to make. Only the Ontario Civilian Police Commission can decide whether Mr. Loghig gets to keep his job or not. Minister, you know that if the Ontario Civilian Police Commission starts an investigation, Mr. Loghig must step aside until the investigation is done and any subsequent hearings are heard. Why won't you ask for this investigation? What are you afraid Mr. Loghig would say if you did? Uh, speaker, on this side, on this side of the chamber, uh, on this side of the chamber, Speaker, we respect uh, the process. We respect, Speaker, the independence the from Oxford, of, come to our, order, second time. of our investigative uh, bodies. Sis, speaker, there is a reason that our bodies, like the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, are created so that there is there is a separation from decisions that are made by the government, the political arm uh, of of the government, and that. Uh, of other independent agency under the se under section 25 of the police services act speaker the ontario civilian police commission has the uh, has the authority to initiate investigations to look at the code of conduct Time we should leave those question. matters to those independent uh, uh, bodies Answer. because that's it is within their jurisdiction speaker thank you thank you so, uh, new question the member from uh, bramley gormal thank you very much mr speaker my question is to the premier now, I know that the season of House of Cards is coming out tomorrow, but I'm not sure the Liberals realize it's not actually a documentary. As much as Frank Underwood intrigues us, behaving like him is beneath the office of the Premier of Ontario. So when will the Premier start showing a little bit of respect for Ontarians and tell, and tell the people of our province who gave Pat Sobera and Jerry Lougheed their instructions? You know, Mr. Speaker, the reason I, uh, I made the statement that I did on Friday and uh, was very clear about the situation and made that publicly outside of this House, Mr. Speaker, was out of respect for the people of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. Out of respect. Sergeant at Arms uh, confiscated the property. Order, please. Order, please. Start the clock. Order, please. The member from Prince Edward Hastings will come to order. 
Thank you. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And what I said in that statement is I said that I take this very seriously. I said that Pat Sarbera will continue to fully cooperate with the authorities as the investigation unfolds. I said that clearly. I said that if charges were laid, then Pat Sarbera would, of course, step aside, Mr. Answer. Speaker. On our review, we don't think that that's going to happen, but that will be up to others to decide, which is exactly what the Thank Chief you. Elections so, Officer has said, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The Deputy Premier this week said that she was bored of question period. I'm so sorry that the Liberal government believes that democracy is boring. It's clear that the Liberals believe that they're above the law, and apparently they're above answering our questions. The Premier has a choice. She can continue to avoid answering our questions, or she can treat Ontarians with the respect that they deserve. The question is this. Who gave Pat Sorbera and Jerry Lougheed their instructions to offer Andrew Olivier a job? Mr. Speaker, I have a deep respect for question period. I have a deep respect for the democratic process. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here answering the questions over and over again, Mr. Speaker. As I said in my statement on Friday, Pat Sorbera will continue to fully cooperate with the authorities as the investigation unfolds. You know, the member for Nipissing is, is heckling, Mr. Speaker, about the retention of information. I think the member for Nipissing knows perfectly well that we have changed the rules here, Mr. Speaker. We've trained our staff. Everyone knows, Mr. Speaker, that we've changed those rules on the advice of the Information Privacy Commissioner. So I just think, you know, I, I just don't think he should get away with that, Mr. Speaker. I Finish, please. I'll just conclude by saying, Mr. Speaker, that uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm not going to force someone to resign in the face of allegations that I do not believe to be true. But, Mr. Speaker, we will continue to work with the authorities. Thank you. New question, a member from Sudbury. Mr. Speaker, this question is for the Minister of Community Safety and Correctional Services. Minister, last month you announced a significant change to corrections policy that relates to transgendered inmates. Previously, inmates in Ontario were housed based on their primary sexual characteristics. They were unable to express their gender identity by selecting their own clothing and personal pronouns. The people of Ontario understood that it was time to change this outdated policy. In our province, everyone should be free from discrimination and harassment. In our province, we want to make sure that, it's vital that everyone James Bain has come rights. To order. This means that the transgendered inmates housed in our institutions dignity you. and respect. Mr. Speaker, through you, can the minister explain the change in Ontario's policy towards transgendered inmates? Yeah. Thank you, Minister thank you. Service, Community Safety and Corrections. Thank you very much, Speaker. I want to thank the member from Sundry for the opportunity for me to share this very important milestone. Last month, Speaker, I was proud to announce a new policy for transgendered inmates uh, in our correctional facilities. This policy, Speaker, builds on Toby's Act and aligns practices with the Ontario Human Rights Code and the Ontario Human Rights uh, Commission guidelines. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank, uh, the, uh, thank the Commissioner Barbara Hall, Speaker, and the Commission uh, for their ongoing guidance on this very important issue. Speaker, this policy will ensure that transgender inmates are placed in an institution appropriate to their gender identity. They will be called by their preferred name and gender pronoun, and they will be provided the opportunity to choose the gender of staff performing Answer. searches. During these searches, they will be given privacy. Uh, speaker, this uh, policy was developed with extensive consultations across the province Thank with you. civil rights groups and correctional working groups. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Minister, for your work in bringing the North to the table to consult on this important subject. And how many people and organizations, including the police service and my great riding of Sudbury, have put a lot of time into this issue. This policy supports the government's obligations under the Ontario Human Rights Code by helping to protect the rights of transgendered inmates. However, there are still some that may be concerned for the safety of transgendered inmates in our institutions. Minister, you have stated that the safety and security of all inmates and staff is one of your top priorities. So it is vital that the rights of transgendered inmates are protected and their security safeguarded as well. Mr. Speaker, through you, can the minister explain 
What measures will be taken to ensure the safety of transgendered inmates while they are in our correctional facilities? Thank you, Minister. Thank you very much, Speaker. And indeed, the safety and security of all our inmates and staff is a top priority of mine and the government. Speaker, in order to ensure their their proper care, placement, and safety, transgender inmates will be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis. Inmates will be consulted during the accommodation process. This will help determine the best housing option for the inmate. Instead, Speaker, of being isolated, transgender inmates will be integrated into the general population when possible, if that is their prefer, uh, pref preference, Speaker. Speaker, uh, we uh, had extensive consultation is this, uh, on this issue, including uh, for, our, for our trans activists from Sudbury and the Sudbury Police uh, Service. One trans advocate from Sud Sudbury recently called these rights the most progressive anywhere in North America. Speaker, protecting the rights of transgender inmates is an important step as we transform Answer. corrections in Ontario and build even safer communities. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. New question, the member from Wellington, Halton Hills. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Premier. Last year's throne speech contained at least one accurate statement that in government, quote, trust is hard earned but easily lost, end quote. How does the Premier expect the people of Ontario to trust her when she refuses to dismiss a top aide who appears to have broken Ontario's election law in the Sudbury by election? Well, Mr. Speaker, that is up to the people of Ontario, and it is up to the people of every riding in the province. It's up to the people of Sudbury, for example, yes, Mr. Speaker, to make their decisions. What I have to do is I have to tell the people of Ontario what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. So on the issue that the, uh, the member opposite has raised, I've been very clear. Pat Cerbera will continue to fully cooperate with the authorities as the investigation unfolds, Mr. Speaker. If charges are laid, then Pat uh, Cerbera, of course, would step aside. I have said that publicly, Mr. Speaker, and I repeat that, and I reinforce that we will work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker, but that that investigation is taking place outside of the House. Mr. Speaker, police services boards are responsible for governing and overseeing the delivery of police services. As such, their members should be held to the highest standards of integrity. When Elections Ontario concludes that a provincial appointee to a police services board appears to have broken the law, which is exactly what they wrote in their report, the Premier cannot pretend that this is just another day at the office. Again, to quote the throne speech, trust is hard-earned but easily lost. Mr. Speaker, how on earth does the Premier of Ontario expect the people of Ontario to trust her when she continues to express confidence in the Police Services Board Chair, who appears to have broken Ontario's election law in the Sudbury by-election? Speaker, it's, it's obvious by the number of questions on this issue that members opposite are very concerned and very passionate about integrity in government. What I would like to ask them is where were they in 2011 when four Harper Conservatives were investigated, charged, pled guilty, and fined for violations of the Elections Act, Speaker? None of them. From Leeds Grenville will desist, the member from Duffin Caledon will desist, and the member from Nepean Carlton will desist. Order. Thank you. Complete your answer, please. So, so my question is, if, if they are so concerned, so passionate, the member from Nepean Carlton, come to order, second time. Speaker, where were they in 2011? Where were you guys? Thank you. New question, the member from Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Premier, of course. It, uh, it's not just the opposition party uh, that's saying the government's behaviour is wrong, Premier. It's uh, also the Toronto Star, the Toronto Sun, the Globe and Mail, the National Post, the Waterloo Record, the Hamilton Spectator. Earlier this week, Speaker, uh, the Sudbury Star published an editorial which ran under the headline, Wins Actions Shameful During Sub Sudbury Debacle. The Premier seems to think she can ignore the from state. Eglinton Lawrence She's come been called out by voices all over this province. Will she come clean and will she start telling the true story? Mr. Speaker, I've been uh, 
<laughs> I've been taking this seriously from the beginning, Mr. Speaker. I absolutely understand that uh, it is extremely important for me to be very clear in this House, outside of this House, with the public, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, I, you know, I, I think to suggest that I'm not taking this seriously is just not accurate. I am absolutely taking it seriously, and I've been clear, Mr. Speaker, that uh, unlike, and the, the Deputy Premier just went through an example where uh, quite the opposite of what we're doing was taking place, Mr. Speaker, under the Harper Conservatives. I've said that Pat Sarbera will, uh, she will continue to uh, work with the authorities. But if there's a charge laid, then, Mr. Speaker, of course, That's she would step aside. That's not what happened in Ottawa, Mr. Speaker. And I've been very clear uh, that that is Answer. what uh, that is the action that we're taking. In the meantime, we will work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, the Stubberry Star goes on to say, uh, one would have expected wind to be more contrite given the bombshell. She should have had the grace to look at at least a little penitent. Instead, Wynne lashed out. The Liberals are on the wrong side of the scandal, and everyone knows it but the Premier. Will the Premier show some contrition and start telling Ontarians the truth? Mr. Speaker, I have been uh, speaking about this repeatedly. I take this matter very seriously. Um, and, and let's just be clear, um, you know, the, there have been a couple of processes underway. Elections Ontario determined that the allegations against me and the member for Sudbury were baseless. We'll continue to fully, uh, fully uh, cooperate as uh, Elections Ontario examination moves to the next phase, Mr. Speaker. But the, the Chief Electoral Officer clearly stated, and I am quoting, I am neither deciding to prosecute a matter nor determining anyone's guilt or innocence. Those decisions are respectively for prosecutors and judges." Unquote. So the process has moved to the next stage, Mr. Speaker. We will work with the authorities in that uh, phase of the investigation, but that investigation is happening outside of this legislature. Right. Thank you. New question, the member from Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And my question today is for the Minister of Northern Development and Mines. I know that Ontario is the top jurisdiction in Canada for mineral exploration, and I am very proud to be part of a government that understands the importance of the North and the importance of the mining sector for our province. As some of us may know, the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada will be holding its, annually, its, its highly anticipated 2015 annual convention here in Toronto next week. Mr. Speaker, can the Minister of Northern Development and Mines please update this House with respect to this annual convention and explain how it is showcasing Ontario's mining sector? Minister, Minister, the Minister of Northern yeah, Development and Mines. An opportunity to speak about the uh, Prospectors and Developers Association uh, Conference, PDAC, which starts this coming Sunday. It's a remarkable uh, convention, uh, Mr. Speaker. There's over 25,000 attendees from over 100 countries uh, and a tremendous opportunity for us, the province of Ontario, to showcase the uh, many success of the province's mining sector. We will be kicking off PDAC this coming Sunday evening uh, with our annual Ontario reception. We, there will be uh, municipal industry, First Nation, Métis Nation uh, uh, guests coming to that reception. We invite everyone uh, for the legislature. I know that the, uh, my critics, well, I'm sure, will be there, uh, but we hope all of you will attend that event. Um, we, one thing we really want to be able to make clear and, 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 and encourage as much as possible is, is to tell the story about Ontario. For, um, just Answer. Sure the province does remain one of the most attractive destinations for mineral investment in Canada and Thank around the you. world, and we're going to tell our story. Thank Thank you. So thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the minister for his update. Uh, Mr. Speaker, our province's mining sector is impressive. I'm certainly pleased that Ontario is hosting this important international conference, actually the largest conference of, a kind, of its kind in the world. And I know that the international delegates who are here will enjoy all that the City of Toronto has to offer. As we all know, the mining industry is very important not only to Northern Ontario but for the entire province. I know that our government continues to engage both corporate and First Nation partners to make sure we are creating the dynamic and innovative business climate that we need for the sector. Mr. Speaker, through you to the Minister, how is our government showcasing our support for such an important industry at this convention? 
Thank you, Minister. Well, thank you. Thank you once again for the question, and I mean the, the fact is our government is absolutely committed to maintaining a very positive uh, investment climate for mining. And one, I think one of the most clear indicators of uh, investment attractiveness is unquestionably exploration spending, uh, and the fact that Ontario remains the Canadian leader and one of the top jurisdictions for mineral exploration uh, expenditures in the world is an incredibly important fact. Let alone mineral production uh, topping over 11 billion dollars last year, let alone the fact that we've got new mines opening up coming up this year and others. There's lots of work to do, Mr. Speaker, but we have a great uh, and, and, and attractive investment climate here in the province of Ontario, and we hope that everybody will be there at the Prospectors and Developers Association to help us sell this to investors from all around the world. Hey, hey. Thank you. Thank you. The member from Farm Hill. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. How is it possible that someone who is the object of an investigation can maintain the access uh, that is being investigated? Do you think that reflects the quality of the government that the residents of Ontario deserve? I think the residents and people in Ontario deserve to hear the truth, a government that is honest and it works to respond to the concerns regarding infrastructure, education, health and others. And Mr. Speaker, this investigation is not happening here in the House. The investigation, it's an investigation that is happening outside of the legislation by the appropriate authorities. I'm ready to work with the authorities and I'm doing that, Mr. Speaker. Once again to the Premier, Mr. Madam Premier, you know that Mr. Cerbera could at this time be erasing uh, emails. How are we going to ask them to leave? Mis Mr. Speaker, the investigation is not happening here within the legislative chamber. The investigation is happening outside with the authorities, and I must work with the authorities, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. A new question. The member from Hamilton Mountain. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. The Liberals and the Premier are facing criminal investigation. This is, is serious. And the response from the Liberals is to talk about the 407, the Pan Am Games, and Go Transit. Instead of showing leadership, the Premier has instead reverted to some of the most shameful diversion tactics this legislature has ever seen. We all thought the performance last Friday was the low point, but yesterday this self-proclaimed progressive Premier stooped to using missing and murdered Aboriginal women as part of a deflection strategy. This is not how a Premier behaves. It's not how a Premier behaves. Order, please. Order, please. Thank you. Please. This is not how a Premier behaves, and this is not how a government who claims to be progressive Question. behaves. Will the Premier take the high road, show some leadership, and answer the question? Thank you. Who told Jerry Long? Thank you. I want to uh, remind the uh, member from Hamilton Mountain that when I stand, you sit. I think I'll say it again so that she sees that I'm talking to her. When I stand, you sit. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, you know, I
I will just I will just say a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, on Friday I made a statement that was very heartfelt, Mr. Speaker. I made that statement because I believe that it was important for the people of Ontario, not just the people in this house, but the people of Ontario, to know exactly where I stood. And what I said in that statement, Mr. Speaker, is that uh, Pat Sorbera and I uh, will continue to cooperate with the authorities as the investigation unfolds, Mr. Speaker. I said that if charges are laid, then of course uh, Pat Sorbera Pat Sorbera will uh, step aside, Mr. Speaker. Um, but in the meantime, Mr. Speaker, uh, we will continue to uh, work with the authorities. But the member opposite is right, Mr. Speaker. I have said in this House, and I said it as recently as yesterday, uh, that I think there are many, many other important things that we need to be talking about, Mr. Speaker. Not that this isn't important, it is, and I take it seriously. Answer. But issues like the uh, missing and murdered Aboriginal women, it's a very important issue, Mr. Speaker. I'm traveling today to Ottawa to take part in a round table tomorrow. Exactly. It's a very, very serious issue, Mr. Thank you. New question. The member from uh, Kitchener Centre. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for alerting me. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, mm -hmm. yesterday the Liberals' non-answer got so over the top that you yourself, Speaker, had to interject. And you said, and I quote, tradition of this place is that the question put deserves answer by the question. End of quote. These are serious questions, Speaker, that deserve answers. And every time Ontarians get another ridiculous non-answer, the Liberals just show how really arrogant they really are. The Premier has just been asked this question 35 times, and she still refuses to answer. Who gave Pat Sabera and Jerry Lougheed their instructions? And Mr. Speaker, the direct answer to that question is that there is an investigation taking place. That investigation is not happening in this House, Mr. Speaker. That investigation is happening outside this House. And the member opposite is right. And I know she hasn't been here very long, Mr. Speaker, but I will, I will acknowledge that she's right, Mr. Speaker, that yesterday there were other issues that uh, we wanted to talk about. There are many other issues that are very, very important for a progressive government like ours, Mr. Speaker, that is actively working on issues like health care, like education, Mr. Speaker, like the issues facing our Aboriginal communities, Mr. Speaker. Those are the reasons I got into government. Those are the issues that we are working on, Mr. Speaker, to make sure that we continue to support the people of Ontario and their communities and help them to thrive. Sure. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Now it's um, start the clock. Now it's uh, new question. Member from Kitchener Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we have so many people who are visiting us today here at the Legislature who are in the nursing profession, and it's unfortunate that they have not been mentioned yet so far today. The opposition has had a chance to do that, and sadly they have not. So let me ask you a question about the people who work in this very important profession. Uh, in my riding of Kitchener Centre, we value nurses in hospitals, in clinics, in long-term care facilities. So I would like to ask the minister to please speak to this. Tell us how important are nurses in our province. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Minister of Health and care. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, and I say this with greatest respect, but utter astonishment that neither of the opposition parties uh, asked a single question about our nursing profession. And I want to take this opportunity. I'm actually going to encourage us all to stand up and recognize and appreciate, acknowledge and celebrate the more than 135,000 nurses that are working hard every single day across this great province. And, and Mr. And Mr. Mr. Speaker, I, uh, I have, Mr. Speaker, I, well, I'm being heckled. Members from Nipissing come to order. I have to say that the people across this province, they like their doctors, Mr. Speaker. Well, perhaps present company accept, <laughs> accepted right now. But Mr. Speaker, Ontarians love their they love nurses. Them, yeah. They love their nurses, Mr. Speaker. And my own sister, for nearly 40 years, has been a practicing RN, proudly serving the people. Yes, Alderman Norfolk, 
and it gives me great pleasure to have the opportunity with the Premier in just a few minutes to spend time with RNAO, the Thank representatives, you. to speak with them in detail. Thank you. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'd like to thank the minister for his very eloquent answer and for the standing ovation that we have given nurses in our province. Uh, if you have had the opportunity, Minister, to speak with nurses today, could you please share with us your conversations with them? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to say as well that over the past uh, seven or eight months, eight months that I've been a Minister of Health, I've had the pleasure of working responsibly and closely with our nurses, whether our, they are our RNs, our nurse practitioners, or RPNs. And I want to give them credit as well when we were working on the Ebola crisis. Yep. Quite frankly, Mr. Speaker, it was the nurses from across this province and across this country, that the, those frontline health workers that alerted us that more needed to be done, that we needed to do a better job at preparing for the potential of an Ebola case coming to this province. And I want to thank them for their advocacy and their hard Hard work to make sure that we provided the best possible care and preparedness that we could. And it doesn't stop there. With international patients, with refugee health care, social determinants of health, enhancing community care, their report that they issued re recently that helps to direct, direct and guide us on important improvements yes, and changes that we need to make in this province. So once again, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank them for being here, and I look forward to seeing them promptly. Thank you. Be seated, please. New question, a member from Len, uh, uh, Leeds Grenville. Question is uh, back to the Premier. Premier, I've just received a public statement as of 11 a.m. from the Greater Sudbury Police Services Board, Vice Chair uh, of the Board. Um, this week, the uh, Police Services Board held an in camera meeting. They've uh, retained legal counsel to discuss the findings of the Chief Electoral Officer's report. They resolved to correspond with the Ontario Police Civilian Commission because they're concerned about the situation. Premier, the people of Sudbury, the men and women of the Sudbury Police Force, the members of the Police Services Board need your leadership. They need you to have Jerry Lougheed and Pat Sorbera step aside Question. while this investigation is going on. Please heed what the Police Services Board is expressing in their concern. Do the right thing. Ask them to step aside. Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Thank you. Premier. Minister of uh, Community Safety and Correctional Services. Yes, sir. Safety and Thank you very much, Speaker. And, uh, Speaker, as I have now offered uh, a response to this question, uh, God knows how many times, Speaker, we know that police and services boards exist. Police services boards exist to provide educated and effective uh, policing uh, within their jurisdiction. Police services boards are composed of both municipal appointments and provincial uh, appointments, uh, uh, Speaker. They are subject to a code of conduct, Speaker. That is uh, that is uh, is enacted uh, through uh, regulation, uh, Speaker, and, and if there is a breach, uh, if there is a suspicion of a breach uh, around that code of conduct, the responsibility to make a determination uh, rests with the Ontario Civilian Police Commission. You, Speaker, you may ask why with the Ontario Civil Liberties yes, Commission? Because, Speaker, that's an arm's length agency exactly. that has no engagement with the government. And that's why, Speaker, we should let the OCPC to do their job and be able to see if, if they feel they need to review. Thank you. Supplementary. Back, back to the minister. Minister, you know what this board does. You know why the Police Services Board retained legal counsel and made this decision. They are obviously as concerned as we are with this issue. They made the decision without the chair involved in their decision. It's right here in black and white. You're the minister. You've got the authority under the act to also ask the civilian commission to look into this. Do your job. Thank you. Minister. 
Uh, speaker, as I mentioned earlier, I think we should let uh, let the independent uh, uh, agencies uh, do their work as stipulated within the legislation. Uh, speaker, under Section tw uh, 25 of the Ontario Civilian Police Commission, uh, under the PC, uh, Police Services Act, OCPC uh, has the authority uh, uh, to look into the matter, and, and uh, I will leave it up to that to them. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The One point, of, point of order, the member from the Minister of Children and Youth Services. Uh, speaker, if I may, I'd like to introduce Claudia Marino and all the nurses from the West Durham Family Health Team. They're in my riding and pickering discoveries. They do a fantastic job each and every day, and I thank them, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's come to my attention on a point of order. Uh, come to my attention on behalf of one of my constituents that we no longer offer closed captioning for our proceedings in the assembly, particularly during question period. I'd like to raise that as a point uh, to yourself as well as to members of the Board of Internal Economy. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that under advisement and re return to the member. The uh, member from Ottawa, Orleans. Mr. President. Mr. Speaker. I have a great pleasure to introduce Monsieur Benigni Vaillanco, who is here today, to talk to the Francophone caucus. Uh, thank you to Mr. Vaillanco to, for all his work to the Asso Francophone Association of Ontario. Yeah. A uh, point of order, Speaker. I'd like to introduce one of the giants of the Canadian mining industry, a member of the Canadian Mining Hall of Fame, uh, a true legend in mining in Canada. Mr. Bill James is here today with us today. Thank you. <laughs> Minister of Northern Development and Mines. Very quick uh, point of order. I want to introduce my very dear, sweet, supportive sister, Susan Houghton, who arrived late for question period, but there she is. <laughs> London West. To introduce Hugh Moran from the Ontario Petroleum Institute and London West constituent. Thank you. I, uh, I do want to remind all the members in the House that uh, knowing that all three House leaders know that we have a deferred vote, I'm going to ask that uh, we cut back on these uh, points of orders because even moving into the next phase is actually part of the vote. So uh, I would be very helpful if we held off on any of these, except if there are uh, serious, uh, not serious, sorry, if they are points of order that deserve attention immediately, I would ask that. And uh, saying such, I looked into it and uh, we do continue to provide the service. Okay, uh, we have a deferred vote on the motion of closure of the motion to second reading of Bill 56. Calling the members, this will be, I, Minister, I'd like to get through this. Uh, call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.
<laughs> Would all members please take their seats? Would all members please take their seats? I had one that used to say, what do I do with it? <laughs> Don't tempt me. On February the 17th, Ms. Hunter moved second reading of Bill 56, an act to require the establishment of Ontario Retirement Pension Plan. Mr. Nackvi has moved that the question be now put. All those in favour of Mr. Nackvi's motion will rise one at a time and be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Nackvi. Mr. Nackvi. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Shirelli. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Susan. Mr. Susan. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Wynn. Ms. Matthews. Ms. Matthews. Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins. Ms. Sandals. Ms. Sandals. Ms. McCharles. Ms. McCharles. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Quinter. Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. Mr. Takar. Mr. Takar. Mr. Barnetti. Mr. Barnetti. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Dillon. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Quadri. Mr. Rosetti. Mr. Rosetti. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Gravel. Mr. Murray. Mr. Murray. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Coteau. Mr. Leo. Mr. Leo. Zimmer. Mr. Zimmer. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Delaney. Mr. Balkasin. Mr. Balkasin. Ms. Albanese. Ms. Albanese. Mr. Dixon. Mr. Dixon. Ms. Manga. Mr. Pratt. Mr. Pratt. Ms. Wong. Ms. Wong. Ms. Hunter. Ms. Hunter. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Sergio. Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Ms. Jasek. Ms. Jasek. Mr. Del Duca. Mr. Del Duca. Ms. Domerla. Ms. Domerla. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Ballard. Mr. Dong. Mr. Dong. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Hogarth. Ms. Koala. Ms. Koala. Madame Lalonde. Madame Lalonde. Ms. Molly. Ms. Molly. Mrs. Martin. Mrs. Martin. Ms. Ms. McGarry. Sorry, Ms. McMahon. Ms. McMahon. Mr. Milchin. Mr. Milchin. Ms. Naidu Harris. Ms. Naidu Harris. Mr. Potts. Mr. Potts. Mr. Rinaldi. Mr. Rinaldi. Ms. Vernil. Ms. Vernil. Mr. Thibault. Mr. Thibault. Ms. Bisson. Mr. Bisson. Ms. Horvath. Ms. Horvath. Mr. Ho Mr. Vantoff. Mr. Vantoff. Ms. Denovo. Ms. Denovo. Ms. Angelina. Ms. Angelina. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Tabbins. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Mr. Miller Hamilton East Stony Creek. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Sattler. Ms. Taylor. Ms. Taylor. Mr. Nadishak. Mr. Nadishak. Ms. Armstrong. Ms. Armstrong. Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Ms. Fife. Ms. Fife. Ms. Forrester. Ms. Forrester. Mr. Mantha. Mr. Mantha. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Hatfield. Mr. Gates. Mr. Gates. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. Gretzky. Ms. French. Ms. French. All those opposed, please rise one at a time. Be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark. Mr. Arna. Mr. Arna. Mr. Hardiman. Mr. Hardiman. Ms. McLeod. Ms. McLeod. Ms. Elliott. Ms. Elliott. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Fidelli. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Miller Perry Sound Muskoka. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. Dunlop. Mr. McNaught. Mr. McNaught. Ms. Jones. Ms. Jones. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Thompson. Ms. Monroe. Ms. Monroe. Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Mr. Urick. Mr. Urick. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Hillier. Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker. Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. Ms. Marteau. Ms. Marteau. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. McDonnell. Mr. Pettipiece. Mr. Pettipiece. The ayes being 71 and the nays being 21, I declare the motion carried. Ms. Hunter has moved second reading of Bill 56, an act to require the establishment of Ontario Retirement Pension Plan. Is it the pleasure of the House to motion carry? I heard a no. All those in favour say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. In my opinion, the ayes have it. Calling the members, this will be a five-minute bell. Uh, just before, sorry, just just before you do that, I was asked if uh, we have the same vote. Same vote. I heard no's. Calling the members, this is a five-minute bell.
Oh, he made it. <clears throat> Ms. Hunter has moved second reading of Bill 56. All those in favour, please rise one at a time be recognized by the clerk. Mr. Nackley, Mr. Bradley, Mr. Bradley, Mr. Bradley, Mr. Bradley, Mr. Shirelli, 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 Mr. Shirelley, 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 Mr. Shirelley,